Good evening everyone, you are watching PME Vidya channels and NCERT's official YouTube channel. I am Rahul and we bring you the session of Social Studies, Social Science and today we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic actually. It is conducting project work in this subject, Social Studies, Social Science and this is for class 8 and to, uh, to brief about this session and to uh, tell us how we can do this, uh, uh, you know, uh, project work. To discuss this, uh, we have Professor M. V. Srinivasan from Department of Education and Social Sciences, NCERT, yeah. with us in the studio. Good evening, sir. A Thank very you. warm welcome. Thank you. And we have Mrs. Deepika Khandelwal from Purna Learning Center, Bangalore. She is also joining with us. Mrs. Deepika, very warm welcome. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Hello to everybody. All right. So, welcome you all. And uh, before we begin, sir, my question is very uh, important and I think uh, very common. In, in social studies, we have to learn so many subjects like geography, uh, history, economics and political science and children have to do a lot of, you know, research for data, facts and everything. So, how it is possible for them to, to, to do some project work in class 8? Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for this very good uh, question, mm -hmm. uh, Rakulji. Uh, uh, my dear students, parents and other viewers. Uh, Particularly when it comes to doing projects in social sciences, uh, this is something very, very new to this country like India. We all know that um, many of you as parents, uh, when you studied social studies, when I studied social science or social studies in our schools, we did not have any projects. Whatever we wrote as a pen and paper test, it was assessed. We were awarded markets only on the basis of the examinations, the term end or annual examinations. Mm -hmm. But this has led to a situation where, where social science is perceived as a very boring subject. Children have to memorize facts and figures. Yes. So due to this, children also felt alienated from this subject actually. So uh, thanks to National Curriculum Framework 2005, which uh, made its guideline that please connect school curriculum with life outside school. Many social science textbooks have incorporated how daily life aspects can be integrated into the school curriculum. As a consequence of the NCF 2005, boards also have responded very positively to include projects as part of the assessment. We know that during the 2009 to 2015, as part of the CCE, which is a requirement of a Right to Education Act, mm -hmm. so children can be assessed continuously as part of CCE, Continuous and Comprehensive Evaluation. So you will find that boards like CBSE allots, particularly in classes 9th and 10th, 20 marks for doing projects. Uh -huh. And out of which 5 marks is for, particularly for the project work. And then uh, for other things, marks are avoided. So this is how the projects have become part of the assessment system. However, there were many enthusiastic teachers who were doing projects in the past, both within the classroom and outside the classroom. The NCRT also brought out learning outcomes. If you look at this document, uh, this is available on the NCRT website. This learning outcome document says that children need to attain certain outcomes, the learning outcomes, in every class. Okay. So for getting these learning outcomes to be achieved in the school system also, projects have become essential now. And if you look at the syllabus of class 8, which includes our past 3, if you look at the textbook, it will be looking like this. This is the NCRT textbook. You may be having different textbooks in different states. And this is the second textbook, Social and Political Life, part 2. And the third textbook, uh, Resources and Development in class 8. So these three textbooks also have given enormous opportunities for teachers to, to engage students actively in the classroom and outside the classroom. So in that sense, the project work gives very um, dynamic relationship within the social science area. Children can do integrated social science projects also. Okay. So in that say, I see a great opportunity for children to engage themselves by doing project work. Right. And especially five marks are very important as you just rightly mentioned. So let us understand. Uh, what happens when children do projects? Uh, Mrs. Deepika uh, uh, has joined us uh, in this session. She is uh, teaching uh, social sciences in Purna Learning Center. So, Mrs. Deepika, would you please uh, uh, share with us 
what happened when children do projects in social sciences? Right. Yeah. So school work, as uh, Professor Shinasan brought out, school work and work project work, and it is uh, graded as well. So we actually we all come across project work all around us. Mm -hmm. Recently, I had my internet disconnected. I was getting disconnected often during my online classes. Mm -hmm. I took up took up the project of the finding the solution. That is a project. So, like, what let's see what exactly is project work. It starts with a question. If a question of it could be collecting information, or could it be finding a solution for something, could be investigation. But the central part of a project work is collecting information and data from multiple sources. It involves a series of activities, uh, which could be, I mean, starting from choosing a topic, asking questions, collecting information from various sources, analyzing it, then including and presenting the information. Uh, these could be run formally or informally. The way I told just now that I was uh, trying to work out my internet problem. So it's like an informal way of doing it. This could be formal under a teacher's guidance or not at all. It could be indoor, it could be outdoor. So there can be various kinds of projects. They could be like, you know, as we talked about, like we have situations where we, I need to take a decision on whether, how often, to which place I can go. So I will collect data about what is the trend, what are the cases, number of cases in that particular area where I'm going to, and what's the rules and norms going on in that area. So it could be just information gathering to take a decision. It could be problem solving, like right just now we talked about internet solution problems. It could be design projects through models, like when we are doing our um, resources uh, chapters and part of geography studies in class 8. So we have power resources. So how do you generate, how do I generate electricity from power resources? So we took up a project of trying to work out a solution of making or generating electricity, maybe small amount to run a LED, to glow an LED from different ways, from wind or from water, from solar. So that could be a design model making, uh, using a design model. Then there could be another thing will be investigation of a case study. Then we could have primary research involving survey. And all these together, if we combine, they could we can have rigorous project-based learning. So these are different ways we could uh, take up project work. I would take about talk about some of the projects which we have done, if you permit so. Yes, yes, please. Okay. So one of the projects, the sample project, I will be talking about three of them. So one of is the in investigation type, wherein we had we were investigating the BBMP facility at Bagalore village, which is some five kilometers northeast from our school. You could see here what happened. Actually, this was some of our teachers, social science teacher, language teacher. He came across uh, this particular park nearby our school, and it was a little unusual. We found that it was pretty isolated area. It was not really, uh, you know, kind of people coming out there often. We tried to study, and we found certain things in this. We found that there was certain uh, some kind of pipe was there. If you could see in the image, uh, some kind of four or five dis pipes around at some distance. We could see some kind of uh, cement rings, and we tried to peep in into that. We were finding out that water was bubbling in that, and it was stinking. In fact. Then we found even this board, which says that uh, it's a scientific disposal management facility and, you know, everybody is not allowed in, in there. So we were trying to work out what we could do. We tried to uh, plan a scheme. We tried to plan a kind of a, a project, I should say, wherein we made it a um, worksheet, wherein children were given the pictures initially and then they were, we, were, we had gone for a visit of it and then worked out certain questions which children wrote and then we analyzed them. So there were two sections of this part. I would say the first one again back when you go, uh, it was this section of the park was the first one, we called it the stop one. And then this is all the first stop. And then second stop where we had this particular setup. Where we could literally see the waste all around. We were wondering, is it, is it the part of the same park? I mean, it was really, we were wondering about that. So we took out these and we wrote, and then we took the children to this place, both the parks, both the, sorry, both the sections of the park, and you could see the slotted, uh, uh, in fact, uh, some kind of holes in these pipes, which were pretty common in this region. 
and then children wrote their answers to them so we could really see that uh, the questions were like do you think the public is welcome here why or why not whether what is unusual about the construction of this park if you look closely what are the different common kind of ways you can come you can identify which even we discard at our home and how do you feel looking at this So initially, when they see the park, first one they were saying that they were feeling very comfortable, very pleasant. The grass was lovely. It was not really thinking as only around there. Only if we go to the rings, we would be thinking. And uh, so they studied that, and they wrote certain things that they could find: plastic bags, chips, food packets, milk packets, and all. And finally, uh, the question was: What is the common physical factor you could see in both the stops? So they said dirty water, dirty water was common in that. Then vertical pipes were common in that. So there was a question was like, okay, so we they, we came back and we discussed about it, we analyzed it, and they realized that this was particularly some sort of waste management. So we went into the questions of what is the what are the different ways we could manage waste, and they came out with these kind of suggestions. Some were saying that no, we can manage waste best way by sending all the waste to the state to rockets. and they literally believed in that we had a half an hour discussion on this and then we even went to some uh, uh, i think uh, some maxim had some kind of thing this question had come into mind and there was an article on that so people said say yes i told you no this can be done then in fact so we studied those some said no we should really not that is not feasible all satellite uh, sun and what we could do is segregation collection treatment the sun thing when it came that sun can absorb and all those uh, theoretical questions Uh, i brought in the picture that let me see if you think it can be done all the material will go away from the earth this way everything will be you know outside into space what do we do so they said no 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 some said our recycling is a must then they came out with okay this is a scientifically waste disposal system which we can do here we have the waste put in here and then we would have a lining uh, down and up they study this system then there will be leachate which will be produced then there will be methane gas which will be coming out so these pipes were for those methane gas release and the dirty water we were thinking that was a leachate so this kind of uh, understanding came out through this project and i would say the summary i would say is that uh, they even studied furthermore and they got to know that this was earlier a uh, granite quarry in the past and uh, once the quarry w- uh, was used up i mean quarry was uh, a pit was created then city waste was being dumped into this once that got filled up bbmp tried to this is municipal corporation in bangalore they tried to set up a experimental facility here but because it was not under it was under experiment so it was not open to public and uh, but effective you waste were you effective way to use the waste and he, this is all i mean they even understood the chemistry behind the decomposition process and how the the this cycling goes on so i mean i would come to the second project mm-hmm. here in what we after we did the study of this experimental setup we went to the metigena halli village dumpyard this was 4 km south from our school that was a, 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 in a different direction so this map you can see here it is the metigena halli village this area and this area is the dumpyard this is a huge when it is around 300 to 400 acres there is the earlier bbmp park was a small area it was i think 40 or 50 acres so this was the actual one which is the waste is still being dumped there and it's a village where people are living here right now so this was also a quarry earlier so we wanted to study what exactly uh, what so it was more of a survey so people wanted to all this in order now that we know what can be a better way of uh, managing waste can we go and see how it's being managed now how were the people feeling out there there is a village nearby mm-hmm. so this is the leachate water it's a huge amount of leachate water it's a big facility so this people uh, students went and they surveyed this area they made a questionnaire we'll come to that this is our bus then uh, this is the questionnaire and some of the inputs they took from the villagers so okay. it is like um, yeah so it is like they asking about uh various uh, the names of the people and what uh, what is the profession they are doing are they really staying there for how long have they been staying what are the health issues they are facing mm-hmm. the people that a long time out there actually 42 years in this you can see and it is the, it is a native place for many people 
but they have are facing some health problems some sanitary issues then it was that how the situation changed with the time they came here so they could see that smell there's they were they're not able to grow enough crops now and they're not able to sell this land as well they have been protest for 4 to 5 years 4 to 5 times in fact and uh, they have felt that they didn't get enough uh, support from the government not from the government but then they did get some roads made by panchayat so it's it's a village within the uh, bangalore municipality which has recently been uh, together accommodated in this so then there was another question was oh, if the dump is full what are your future plans they said most of them are saying they'll stay there because this is the only place they can be they could not go anywhere else so these were the various things we came out with when they got all the input from various people they uh, they took input from variety of in across sections of people and then we we had first visit discussion in the classroom so this was the mind map which was made by the teachers which is social science which uh, aparna was a teacher she was language and social science we went together uh, i mean the whole discussion happened they made the mind map and then the outcome of it was that let's write the letter to be bbp commissioner so the students as part of language class they wrote the letter each one of them has written and we have not yet because this happened in february or march they were finishing it and by then they went into lockdown and we could not really um i should say post it and they we wanted to move their commissioner now the commissioner also has changed that so they really felt very concerned yeah, uh, so this overall out of this project we found out that they, they were awareness of the neighboring community students felt the ownership when they saw those waste like you know the paper nap uh, the various kind of uh, plastic bags and uh, you know the dresses shoes uh, they really felt kids packets they felt that no something has to be done so they meet, they met even the panchayat they understood their issues what are the issues they are facing so pers- different perspective came into picture from different stakeholders it was not that it was only complaining the bbmp or the panchayat we understood what are their concerns and that finally they were feeling the poverty in the hand of citizens after all they understood what was the regulatory structure we even had ngt meeting uh, minutes they went through yeah tell me uh, yeah once like it's very interesting to see mm-hmm. uh, uh, rahul actually when mm-hmm. we do project it is generally thought that the students will be given a title and then and then they will submit the project actually mm-hmm. but if you look at uh, these two projects you will see the teachers have to do a lot of work and in yes. the beginning they have to identify the problem right and then uh, teacher have to prepare a questionnaire or a set of questions actually mm-hmm. so when you do project work and uh, yeah, a lot of work has to be done by the background work is to be done right. by the teacher actually the thirdly uh, t- teacher also has to see what are the steps what are the first step what is the second step what is the third step she has to undergo uh, Uh, for, and also she has to plan what kind of uh, outcome what is the learning outcome for example in the second project it is interesting to see that children are able to articulate their ideas and sending to the bangalore commissioner about the village right. and in the first project also you will see that the how children also contributing to the sustainable development right. they write to they they find out some of the innovative ideas to waste management actually right so the project work is not simply meant for the examination purposes it also serves the social purpose you are contributing to the society in which you live right and projects need not be all the time um, uh, involves lot of cost also it's a this first project if you look at uh, what uh, uh, miss mrs dipika has done is that they, and her school students have done is that they have uh, looked at the locality in, in which they live right. the park is nearby that area yes. so the project has uh, need not be all the time from the textbook alone basic ideas some of the important concepts from geography or some of them from the history some of them from the social political life because she has to know who is the who is managing the park so what are the political science dimensions she will be like uh, they, they have to be they get aware about it and how to react how to right. reflect huh? how to contribute to the park in which they visit regularly so in that sense actually project has a lot of scope uh, uh, what do you think uh, dipya ji yes actually this is the, uh, the i i must say this is a very good initiative i must say uh, the kind of uh, the initiative which we need actually the most and they have identified the right reason and 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 we live uh, being a citizen we live the place and we are surrounded by the projects live projects in in terms of social sciences so this, so, so this is really interesting to know and these students have done the great job 
So uh, we have actually a very less time, but yeah. I, I'm sure this is a very interesting topic. Yeah. So I, uh, we are also going to have one more session on this yes, uh, yes. same part two, maybe in the next week uh, okay. on this same topic, mm -hmm. and we are going to share. Um, how uh, topics like history and geography can be integrated as a part of project? What okay. kind of projects can be done in right. that actually? And, and then these can uh, make some changes yeah. in the in, 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 means in the society. Yeah. So there is also an element of uh, expenses. Like what are the challenges uh, teacher have to face? Actually, maybe you should be able to like you just wait for the next week. We are going to discuss about <laughs> what are the challenges that you are going to face right, right. when you are doing a project outside the school system. Thirdly. Right. Need not projects always need not be outside the school, outside the classroom. There are many projects um, uh, that can be done within the school system, within the classroom also. That is uh, like um, uh, given your school library, uh, there is a lot of scope for doing project work. Right. And uh, I hope that next week we will be able to uh, explore more on this issue. And finally, uh, how to evaluate project actually. Right. You, uh, students, uh, you may be knowing that you may be having five marks in class 9th and 10th, but the project work starts from class 5, 6. I, I see in many schools. Uh, children doing projects from the class 3 and class 4 onwards actually. Oh, so how goodness. to evaluate projects. Right. So this uh, next session is going to be much more interesting and yes. uh, uh, at least one or two sessions we are going to have on the same topic for class 8 uh, level and how to evaluate projects. How right. rubrics can be used to do project actually. So rubrics are uh, recently recognized by the uh, many uh, boards as part of evaluating projects. So how to formulate uh, rubrics. Uh, f uh, when you uh, formulate a project actually. That also be discussed in the next part. Right. Thank you, Professor Srinivasan. And uh, Mrs. Deepika, would you like to conclude this session with your concluding remarks? As per uh, Professor Srinivasan, we are going to meet soon in next week. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been uh, way forward, like I see that I would really like to conclude to children. I really call them for whatever uh, issues they see come across. Mm -hmm. The three or four questions which we can really pose could be where is something? And why is it there? What is the consequence of it being there? And then what if something was to change? Mm -hmm. So we really go through this uh, three or four question, which I have taken from TIG's website. I think it can really uh, engage the children to find out and search and find their answers and understand life themselves better, including curriculum. Right. Curriculum is part of life. Right, right. And so that's like I would like to conclude with this. Oh. And we need to give students more opportunities to present project, do project and even to public forum like I IGYS. Must say, I must say this is... This is together. GG. Thank yeah. you very much for sharing your thoughts. Actually, this is the uh, opportunity for us to learn from Professor, Sri, uh, Professor Srinivasan and you. Thank you very much. You both have joined in this session and give us the perfect insight of these uh, projects, including in this uh, subjects. So thank you very much for sharing this subject. This is the thank session uh, now comes to an end. Uh, we will be uh, right back with the next session of webinar in which we uh, talked about uh, ICT tools. So don't go away. Keep watching and be with us. Namaskar. Mm -hmm.